it is time to finish this. Cavalero, you have something. Technically, I already have. The Predos. The other two are built, so you... I mean, the 100 Plasm, to be fair, I'm amazed that I actually have so much of that stuff left, but still, it's there. So, you... Build. So if we compare them to any other Tonfas, I mean, look at the green difference. Green is better than what I have equipped. So the Telos Boltus is better. Oh, let's ignore the Cronin Prime being way better for crit chance, status, damage across everything. You have to remember the base stats of these doesn't really mean that much. Because these have something the others don't. That was actually very quick. So you're not ready, but you are. And select an upgrade. Reach five times combo and then heavy attack to activate. So you have to have a five times combo before you can even activate the incarnate form. Oh. Then for the next evolution, we need to heavy attack. It says complete three heavy attacks, so whether you can do three on one enemy should be easy enough to do. We've just got to find one, and to be fair, sometimes they can be really hard to take out, so completing three heavy attacks on them should be easy. I forgot about this. Side attack uh, doesn't really matter. As I've mentioned multiple times before, all that basically happens with these, you can go back at any point and change them. It doesn't cost you anything. So, to be fair, I'd rather have range more than anything else. I'm not really going to heavy combo it, so slide range would be useful, but I think the initial combo would be better. But now, close 12 raptures in Void Flood. After doing that mission with all of them equipped and unlocking Evolution 5, you can, of course, come back at any time and change these for whatever you want to set them to, apart from the first one, because I'm pretty sure if you deactivated that, uh, the incarnate form wouldn't do anything. And I've been looking through these, and to be fair, I was actually thinking about... I've been sliding this a lot more, so obviously having the slide distance on these would be much better. Mm. But I still think I'm going to leave the last one on 100% heavy attack wind up speed. But you do have to remember if you do go for this option, using a heavy attack will clear your combo counter to zero. Something to be wary of. I, I just wish that I had the primed fever strike just ever so slightly higher and... For the rest of it, it's basically weeping wounds and increase the attack speed with Prime Fury. For an attack speed of 1.81, yes, please, thank you very much. And the rest of it just went on status, simply because that seems to be what I keep doing for everything. And I just didn't feel like putting Sacrificial Steel on this, which is what I usually do with most melee weapons these days. Sacrificial Steel adds 220% crit chance and... They still worked out to be pretty good. Not the best melee of the whole update, however. Just kind of has to go to the Hespar. The Hespar is big, bad, and powerful. It doesn't actually have, well, it kind of does. It's got more crit than this. It's got more status than this. It has more damage than this. It is a little bit slower, but that's about it. And, uh, granted, it, technically, it also has one extra heavy damage. This has heavy damage times two. That has heavy damage times three. And does three times the heavy damage than this thing does as well. So, from the whole Angels of the Zaramon update, no. The Predos is good, don't get me wrong. In its incarnate form, it is quite lethal. But the Hespar... The Hespar annihilates this thing quite easily. Which one do I prefer? I haven't decided. I am having too much fun. I like my dual wielding weaponry. So I'm quite happy to continue running this thing. It still has a slam attack that's over 10,000. It's heavy attack. Technically, it's 5,000 times 2. So yeah, it still works. I still like it. It's 
cannot fault its damage in the slightest. It's just that in Conan form and having to do the heavy attack, if it wasn't for the fact that on the Evolution 4, it has reached three times combo and heavy attack to activate in Conan form, rather than the five times, the five times kind of ruined this. While using it, getting it up until Evolution 4, getting a five times combo, it's easy enough to do, but it's annoying. The three times combo, much easier, much quicker, in Cornet it, because this in Cornet form isn't based on damage done or anything like that, it's just timed. Once you get the three times combo, you can get off one enemy, if they are high enough level, you can just in Cornet it and it will stay in Cornet. Even if you put it away, jump to the other weaponry to take something out at range, come back to it, it'll still be active within that time frame. It's not amazingly long time frame, unlike the primary and the secondary that you put away in Cornet and they stay put away in Cornet until you take them out and basically empty the magazine if you want to call it that. This thing has a timer on it, which it works with a three times combo. With a five times, up until you get to evolution four, this thing can seem like a bit of a chore. After that, it becomes way much more fun. The other thing that kind of ruined this for me is the fact that Teshin's dual swords are kind of an Easter egg and I would rather have those. But when it comes to dual wielding weaponry, yeah. The 1.81 attack speed with Prime Fury thrown in there saves these things. Probably use a different frame than Gaia for it, because she is not the quickest of frames, so trying to get that slide attack usually comes up a bit short, but go for a faster frame, that won't be a problem. And the Prados, yeah, the Inconan form, way better. Normal form isn't nothing wrong with it just the incarnate form is basically what you want to do as soon as you get it in three times combo and then it will it's good up until about level i want to say 80 85 and then after that it starts to kind of suffer a lot more than a lot of other melee weapons do out of the three incarnate weapons this being the last one you get a hold of the most expensive of them I was amazed to see the most expensive one was the worst, the middle one was the middle one, and the first one that you can get the second you get in there, literally, do the quest, go in there, you'll have a pinion, trade the pinion, go see him, get the blueprint for the, the Latrum, Latum, sorry, Latum, and you have the best Incarnan weapon, because the, the Incarnan form of the secondary way better. So I kind of think they got the order of the Incarnan weapons wrong. So kind of hope they buff this ever so slightly. It doesn't need a lot, just a tiny little bit more damage. Would probably do it. But as it is, it's still fun. It's still better than the Cronin, but not as good as the Cronin Prime. I think that's basically what this comes down to. The fact that the Cronin Prime exists kind of ruined this for me because that has more crit, more status, more damage on every aspect of it, more damage. And it just feels better because you're not constantly trying to get it into its Incarnan form to get the damage out of it. The Cronin just has it. To be fair, that's more of a status based weapon than this as well. It just kind of, when it came to Tonfaz, it needed to be the best. And sadly, because the Cronin Prime exists and does this damage constantly with no need to go to any secondary form to get more damage or more anything from it, the Cronin Prime just seemed more fun and just seemed to be the better weapon, but it's not quite so true. The difference is 12 damage, crit didn't really mean much, but it did more status. A lot, lot more status. I understand why they wanted to keep the Cronin Prime the better of the Tonfa weapons, but in doing so, they basically made the Prados the worst in Cronin weapon. And that's why I'm saying I hope they buff these things ever so slightly because with the Cronin Prime being a thing, these needed to be better. 
considering the Zaramon is so far ahead of just building a normal weapon, to get to these things as a long road, it needed to be better than the Cronin Prime. And there is not a single part of it that is better than the Cronin Prime. And that has just sat in my head since the first time I equipped these things. Are they going to be better than the Cronin Prime? Barely. And I mean barely. Because that doesn't have an incarnate form, it's more fun than these. They do, I mean it's probably minuscule more damage when it comes to its incarnate form and all the buffs and everything else. These do that constantly. Best of the incarnate weapons, these are not, which is a huge shame. Which is why I say the primary is still the best. Well, I'm sorry. It also does the most damage at, for some reason, now 13 and a bit thousand. Nearly 14,000 damage. Even the primary doesn't do that much for its uh, incarnate form. This thing does. Might be a smaller magazine, but it's still better. So it went first one, second one, third one. Or what should have been worst one, middle one, better one best one and what they did is they reversed it where it was worst still the middle but best and with that we'll leave this off here thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time